Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're gonna gonna take a look at the GTX 1070 PCB. The v PCB picture, as always, is pulled from TechPowerUp's review of the GTX 1070 Founders Edition. So yes, this is the Founders Edition PCB. This is the very special PCB that you will be paying a premium for. Um, and it, it looks sort of like the 1080 PCB, does it not? It looks sort of like somebody took a hammer to the 1080 PCB because there's stuff missing. Well, I mean, there was already stuff missing, but now there's more of it. So, just for quick comparison, that's a 1080. That's a 1070 PCB. So where are the differences? Because there, there's not really that many of them. Well, first of all, the 1070 loses several phases so on the 1070 we only have a four phase which is basically wait give me a second just this section of the vrm like that so yeah the other difference is obviously the 1070 is using gddr5 which uses bigger memory chips and actually that leads to the one other difference this has over the uh, 1080, which is the memory uh, VRM. The memory VRM here is actually beefed up. We have two FETs in the single uh, memory phase, which is right here. Ta-da! So, yeah. So now you have 100 amps for the memory because GDDR5 is a more power-hungry, uh, you know, it's more power-hungry than GDDR5X. So there's a slightly better VRM for that, but because the GTX 1070 is a lower power card than the GTX 1080, uh, NVIDIA decided to rip off another phase, and that's why we now have this right here, which is two phases missing, um, which is actually only one phase missing compared to the 1080, because the 1080 doesn't use the last phase either. Because, you know, a dollar worth of components, actually even less. NVIDIA is buying these in bulk. These things are like dirt cheap. Oh well, I guess when you make a thousand cards and you can save ten cents per phase, that's a couple, actually a couple thousand cards. Yeah, that sort of makes sense, doesn't it? Oh well, not much you can do about it. The cool thing is though, this card is a uh, Volt Mod compatible with the 1080. So if you've seen the article by Tin about volt modding the 1080 you can apply that to the 1070 pcb because it's basically the same thing i mean a few components have shifted around uh and yeah but otherwise your power mods are still the same so if you're doing power modding there's this shunt there's also this shunt these now don't have labels on them and there's also this shunt over here and you basically just have to short those out how you do that doesn't really matter uh, I personally recommend using Cool Laboratory Liquid Ultra, which is liquid metal, because you can just, you know, brush that on there and it'll, you know, it'll stay there. It is, it is a very liquid liquid. It isn't particularly runny. It doesn't tend to run, uh, uh, run off PCBs, so it won't, like, as long as you don't put a great big dollop of it, it shouldn't drip off. And, of course, if the card dies, then you can remove it and send it in for RMA and they won't be none the wiser. Um, but, yeah, this, this PCB is, uh, ugly, so, yeah, I'm not gonna detail any vault mods, because as I said, there is Tin's guide, you will find that in the comments, huge props to Tin for making that, uh, and yeah, this, this is the 1070, I mean, was anybody expecting anything better? I'm actually kind of surprised that NVIDIA recycled the 1080 PCB, but, you can actually tell that that's actually like the 1080 PCB was really confusing to me because, right, let me get it. There we go. That's the 1080 because on the 1080 PCB, you have this ridiculous memory design here, right? Like I was like, I initially wasn't sure if they actually put four MOSFETs into the memory design. Like I just was like, why? Why are there so many? What? What are they doing with that? And they did. It is, in fact, four FETs entirely for the memory section. Um, so, 
Yeah, and, and basically this shows you exactly why you see PCBs with so many components missing, because it's really cheap to print a couple thousand of one thing, except then they change the, you know, then, then they change this part of the PCB, so it's like, uh, a lot of those co cost savings on printing the same thing several times went down the drain, I guess, but, because, yeah, see, your this capacitor is actually moved relative to these inductors, and so there, there is a few changes in that, and that's just really odd, right? Like this capacitor basically shifted down by that. Yep, it moved, which is just kind of weird, because you'd, and I guess they did save a lot of money on not redesigning the entire VRM, but if they redesigned that section of the PCB, they needed to print it multiple, like they needed to print a different batch of PCBs anyway. So, I don't know, it's it's a little bit weird. But, yeah, you can sort of see why it is that you have so many free components on the 1080, especially in the memory phase, because the 1080's memory is, you know, the GDDR5X chips, they're actually smaller than the GDDR5, which you can sort of tell in the pictures, and they're sort of more long, they're sort of longer than they are square-like. They're both rectangles, obviously, um, but yeah. So that's why you have four, four, you know, four soldering pads for MOSFETs in the memory phase on a 1080, and then you have those same, like it's the same VRM. And I'm, I'm still confused why they used four, because they're not using four here anyway. Um, but Nvidia is going to do what Nvidia does, and I guess putting way too many solder pads was just optimal solution for something. Maybe the... I, I can't think of why. Because they obviously printed another PCB here. So, yeah. A little bit weird. A little bit weird. I mean, they could have recycled other VRM designs as well. I mean, they have the 680 VRM design, the 780 VRM design. They... 780 might have been overkill, but they still could have recycled that. That w that would have worked perfectly well, and it's actually very similar to the build of the of the what's it called 1080, because it's you know a six phase again. But yeah, kind of interesting to see the differences between the 1070 and the 1080. I honestly thought these were just straight up clones when I first saw them. So it's interesting that Nvidia redesigned this area. Because while the 1070, so there is actually a major difference between the two cards as far as voltages go. The 1070 has GDDR5. GDDR5 does not need the 1.8 volt rail that the GDDR5X needs to refresh. So basically there's a voltage that you shove into RAM to basically refresh all the memory in it. And GDDR5X has a 1.8 volt rail for that. And GDDR5 doesn't have that. It has some other voltage i think i'd have to look at the spec but this doesn't need the 1.8 rail so it kind of makes sense that the area where the 1.8 rail is located on the 1080 is redesigned but on the other hand they could have just you know not put the stuff for that voltage controller there and it would have worked just fine so yeah it's a weird pcb it's still garbage though <laughs> That hasn't changed. It's still really, really subpar, and I still wouldn't recommend heavy overclocking on it. But then again, it seems like the 1080 and the 1070 just don't scale with voltage or power or anything, really, from the early reports. There's a few cards that seem to be okay on liquid nitrogen, but none of the reference PCBs are, are working, so... Uh, working properly. And if you're on air or water cooling, then, you know, just... just you, you don't really need any mods on there. So yeah, that's that's that for this video. Um, and I will admit, I put a lot of filler in here <laughs> to get those 10 minutes. Um, so that's that. But you can be excited for more, uh, more better content soon. Um, I'm going to be doing a review of the 990FX Dash Gaming sometime over the weekend. That'll be up on the YouTube channel. There will also be a written review up on the blog. I'll do the, finally get to do the photos. I hate taking photos. I've restarted digging into one of my Fury X's. So, 
you can be excited for that. And I think I found a workaround for power modding the things. Well, not really a workaround, but just it's. I found some stuff, so I might make some major progress on the Fury X's, because International Rectifier does have some public data sheets that document their voodoo magic. Um, so yeah, you can be excited for that, and other than that, PCB uh, videos, um, I have a few more planned. If there's any PCB you specifically would like to see, drop a comment down below. If you have the card, you can hugely speed up the process by basically just taking photos for me, and I'll, I'll give you a few requests for things I need you to do. And if you do them, then, you know, I, I can get the video out super fast. Otherwise, it's me really digging for decent photos a lot of the time and not finding them. So, yeah. Um... Uh, yeah, so that's that's for if you want to see uh, specific PCBs reviewed, and as that, um, yeah, that's it. So like, share, subscribe, and consider donating to help with all the crazy project stuff I'm doing. Uh, like, there's a few projects currently going on, like the poor Fury X's. They need more Volt Mod components. Um, yeah. So that's that for this video, and oh wait, one one last thing, do leave a comment down below about the audio quality. I think it should be better, like there certainly shouldn't be as much popping as there used to be in the past, I hope. So yeah, that's that. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.